Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everything Theater Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything theater. How simple is that? Hi, I'm so Ellen Zahn. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And we do, we talk about everything theater. I mean, from A to Z. Even in times of very little theater, we're That's still talking about it because oh, yeah. it's that great. There's a lot going on. And if it's not on stage, there's a lot of creating going on. Mm -hmm. There are spaces that are looking to reimagine and how to go forward. So I, I still find this I, I, delightful, exciting. And Ellen, you know, we're booked for the next three weeks. I know. It's, oh. it's amazing. I mean, it's actually a great opportunity for us to talk to people because <laughs> they have a, a little bit more room in their schedule to chat. <laughs> There are some folks we want you to get, and they're like, well, I got this show, and then I've got that, and I'm going to be out of town. And so, hey, the one tough thing you and I started chatting about before we uh, began our recording, and uh, folks will hear this a little bit after the fact, but big fire at Jacob's Pillow and the Doris Duke Theater that had been open since 1990, poof, up in smoke. They were doing some work there. Workmen spotted the fire. Maybe that was it, as, as we are recording tonight. Uh, they don't know what caused it, but that's a very big loss for them. Mm. So 2020, I tell you. Get that out of the, put that puppy in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. We have an exciting, we have a very different kind of guest tonight. It's theater, but it's not theater. True, Ellen? Yeah, absolutely. It'll, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are talking with Casey Polamain from the Albany Barn. And um, hi, Casey. Hi, thanks for having me. This is, I'm so excited. So before I left my day job today, I told one of our uh, younger uh, members at the station, you know, what where I was doing. And I said, yeah, we talked to the folks from uh, Albany Theater, uh, Albany Barn. And he's like, well, what's that? And I said, well, basically it's an incubator for artistic endeavors. And he's a filmmaker or a wannabe. And the eyes lit up. And he said, oh, I need to know about that. Oh, nice. I love stories like that. <laughs> so what does it mean to be an incubator for the arts, Casey? So we offer, in, a, in kind of a nutshell, um, we offer services to artists at all stages of their career. Um, and our goal is to offer these services at um, a really low cost so that these artists can save a little bit of money and um, you know, then put that back into growing their career. So we have um, 22 apartments where artists live and work out of, and that's all through low income housing. Um, so again, they get a little bit of a break on their rent and then those funds can go back into, into, you know, their artistic endeavors. Um, we have work studios. So those are for folks that live elsewhere, but need a place to, to do their work. And that could be anything from, um, painting to photography to um, like digital media, or we have um, like a fiber arts um, individual there who, who does weaving. So we, we have spaces for those folks. And then we have a really large performance um, event meeting space. So um, those might be for people who say want to start a theater company um, and need a space to do it. Um, we can offer a really flexible rate to rent the space. And we can also help with services like selling tickets, um, networking, we can help create marketing, uh, things like that. So really, whatever kind of art you do and whatever your need is to help um, turn that, we always say, turn your craft into a career. So whatever help you need to do that, that's where we come in. And you're located not far from what will be the new um, Capital Repertory Theater. Yeah, we are on um, second, uh, the corner of North Swan and second. So it's like a block or two away from the new cap rep. Um, so it's been really exciting. I drive by that building every day on my way to the barn. So it's been really cool to see that building come together. And it just seems like overnight, they like the whole thing got a paint job. They have new windows. It's looking really beautiful. So I'm really excited for them to open and to be our, our new neighbors. A great synergy for the arts at all in that neck of the woods. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, you know, like Albany Distilling is, is right there as well. So, you know, the, the hope, right, is to make a, 
is to really bring that like walkability um, back to that to the area so you can go, you know, grab a drink, you can go see a show, and then maybe afterwards check out the art exhibition at the barn, and it's all within a few blocks walking distance. And if your show didn't go so good, you're going to get yeah. <laughs> more drinks. <laughs> the cheers and the liquor. What's yeah. the impetus for the barn? You know, give us a little bit of a backstory. Sure. Um, so there was um, our founder, Jeff Morell. Um, he spearheaded um, creating a, a concert series called Rock to Rebuild. Um, that was really a, um, a response to um, some some kind of natural uh, disasters that were happening in the area and they wanted to kind of raise some money. So Jeff um, staged like you know, several different concerts in the area and got all of these local artists together and everyone kind of came together, donated their time and, and they threw this big concert, which raised, um, I think about 26 or $27,000. Uh, that was back in 2004, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was quite a while ago. Yep. Um, so the success of that and the way that all of these artists just came together for this common goal was really sort of the, um, the catalyst to think, you know, what if we had a space where things like this could happen and we had a space where artists like this could come together and, you know, put on a show or learn from one another in some way. Um, so kind of with that in mind, we started looking at other spaces in primarily the Northeast, but throughout the country really that were doing this type of work. Um, and we worked a lot with AS220, which is um, in Providence, Rhode Island. And they have a very similar model, you know, workspaces, um, apartments, things like that. So we took a lot of cues from them and just sort of uh, piecemealed together what we thought our, uh, you know, our vision could look like. And uh, we partnered with the Albany Housing Authority to, to get the building um, and to get some help um, managing the apartments. So Albany Housing is the property manager, and then we sort of take on the more uh, artistic creative side of the of the, the gig I guess. <laughs> now if you're an artist that wants to work in residency with the Albany Barn what's the qualification process application uh, what who are you looking for? So we um, we are primarily looking for folks who want to be artists as their career. Um, we do we do work with lots of folks that just enjoy art as as a hobby, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but the barn is really designed to help these folks that are turning it into a career. So that could be um, somebody who's just coming out of college or even high school and they want to pursue a career in the arts. Or that also could be someone who maybe worked um, at a desk job for the last 30 years and now they've retired and they want to get back to their love of art. Uh, so I think, you know, the youngest um, people in our building, the youngest person in our building is like early 20s and the oldest is late 60s. So no matter mm -hmm. kind of what age you are and what stage of um, your artistic journey you are in, if you want it to be your career, that's who we're here to to really help um but the to live at the barn you have to apply through it's through us but it's also through the housing authority and there's a little bit more hoops that you have to jump through for um like income qualifications yeah, but is, that can, I'm jumping, is that considered section eight housing it is yep yep it is um so yeah so you do if you live at the barn you do have to meet with um you know, some goal specialists about once a year to kind of check in on your progress and, you know, where you are in your, like, kind of how your income might have changed and what you're doing, you know, as far as meeting your goals, things like that. Um, but if you just want a work studio or if you just want to rent the performance space, um, that's, that's sort of much less uh, intensive of a process. And that's really just, you know, filling out a proposal, shooting us a message saying, hey, I have this idea. I would love help or I would love a space and then and then we can help you with whatever you need. So since this is everything theater, have you launched any theater productions out of there? Small, large, or in between? Yeah, it's well, it's funny that you should ask. So um I am I'm a theater artist myself. Um I am half of a um theater collective called Creative License. Oh, um, sure. 
Yeah, that I, I run with my my friend, my partner, Aaron. Um, so Aaron and I actually, um, we when we started a st um, creative license in 2014, we needed a space to do our first show. And Aaron had said, oh, I've heard of this place called the Albany Barn. We should check them out. So we met um, with the executive director, Kristen, and she helped us put on our very first show um, in 2014. So I loved it there so much. I had said to her, I want to be a part of this building in any way I can. Um, if you're ever hiring, you know, please let me know. And then a few months later, I, she let me know. <laughs> and I've been working there for about um, five and a half years or so, but um, my theater company was really born out of the barn, and we've um, we've done over a dozen shows, and our audience has grown, and we've been lucky enough to get a lot of really great like news coverage over the years and great reviews. Um, and if we didn't land at the barn, because you know we had we had no money when we were starting, we just had you know a little team of four people and a show that we wanted to do. Um, and we could do it because of the barn and because the costs were so low and because they were able to offer these services. Like we hadn't even thought about how to sell tickets, um, but the barn did that for us. So they really helped us kind of get going. Um, and it's always a story that I like to tell um, because, you know, obviously I work there and I know that side of it, but I'm also an artist that has benefited from the services of the barn. So I can kind of speak to both sides of the, of the barn coin. <laughs> Funny coincidence. I've only been to the Albany Barn once. Um, I accidentally went there uh, thinking there was a show when it was at um, Theater Barn, which is somewhere very, very different. So, yep. you know, yep. don't that go there. <laughs> 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 but, but the one time I went to Albany Barn, I saw a fantastic show. And in my stalking that I like to do before we talk to a guest, uh, I was like, oh, Casey directed it. I saw Maple oh. Design. <laughs> <laughs> it was very very awesome thank you yeah that was uh oh that was a big show that was a big undertaking and we had had that script in our pocket for a couple years um but we never felt quite ready to take it on because there's so many you know it's set in like a different time period so you have to get all the costumes right and you know there's just there was so much to do um but it was fun to take on and I, i'm so proud of that show and what we were able to put together What's the space for those who haven't been there? What's it like in terms of in front, the seating, wing space, you know, lighting? Yeah, give us a sense. So somebody's listening to this and they go, you know, I've got some old curtains and there's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the space is actually the building was actually um an old school and then it got rehabbed into, into the barn. Um, so it's just this really large open room. And you know, there is a, there is a stage all the way at the end of it um, that if you want to kind of put on, if you want to stage something in a traditional way, um, there is a, a very large, very deep stage for you to do that. Um, but we've also had, um, performances where people stage it entirely on the floor and don't use the stage at all um or you know there's the whole building is open including the upper level so like if you're standing on the floor and you look up you can see all of the workspaces around you um so we've actually creative license actually did a show where we had action up on like the, the balcony area so you could watch stuff on stage or you could look up and sort of see action all around you um, so it's definitely not a traditional space. I mean, the only thing traditional about it is that there is a stage area, um, but there's no real curtaining. Um, we kind of hang the lights up on the railing around the space. Um, there's not a huge green room in the back. Uh, we kind of had to make our own space with, you know, hanging little curtains and things. Um, but it's terrific if you want a space that um, we'll give you a little bit more opportunity for staging. You know, if you want to stage something in a completely different way, um, the barn is a fantastic spot for you to do it in. How many seats? Uh, there's, they're all movable. So you can, I mean, it fits up to about, I'd say 125 seats. Like if you set them up in rows, um, but you can set them up on the floor in the round. Um, you can do like little clumps of seats throughout and you can, so you can really create um, an intimate space or you can create a very traditional looking space. It all just depends on, you know, your imagination and how you want to use the chairs. And, uh, so is anybody coming in now in the, since March? 
Are you doing any theater? Well, yeah, we were shut down for quite, for a couple months, um, which was really difficult because so much of our revenue is on um, holding events. So we're not doing any theater performances right now, but we have had a few small groups that have come in and held like small classes, or we have a theater group right now um, that's they're rehearsing in the space and then they're going to film what they're doing. So it's just a, a small number of people, no audience. Um, so we're really trying to adapt uh, and use the space in new ways and still bring theater folks in, even though it might not be a traditional, you're doing a show on stage in front of, you know, 50 or so people. Seems like that's really the, the trend. I feel like it was all zoom, 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 zoom. And now it's like, we're going to rehearse and, and perform with our actors, but we still can't have a live audience. So we're going to yeah. film it and release it that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you, I'm sure, I'm sure you you both know, um, it, it, when when you're an actor and doing theater, there's nothing like, you know, really being in the same room as your scene partner and you know connecting mm -hmm. with them, um, and when you lose that, you do lose a little piece of what makes theater so magical. So it's nice that we've been able to open our space in such a safe way to have these um, these creators be face to face again. And you can just feel, you know, the very first night that um, the theater group that's in there now came in, you know, people were kind of coming in one by one and everyone had masks on and everyone was staying far apart, but everyone was just so excited to see one another in person and be back creating in person. So that was, it's just really nice to be around in, in a time where things are so difficult. <laughs> Would you have a few people, say uh, Ellen and I, you know, bring the curtains and, you know, do our show. If we have a dozen folks, can you accommodate something like that to have them, you know, sitting around, socially distanced, masked? Yes, we can. And that's another really nice thing about the space being so flexible um, is you can, we can set up the chairs, however. So if you have 12 people coming, we can put tons of space between those 12 chairs and between those chairs and the stage. So everybody that's there feels like they have room around them and uh, are, you know, safe and secure. So yes, if you have a, a small group and you want to come in and do and some sort of uh, show, we are here for it and we're here to help. Now you've also got something going on um, from Creative License. It's uh, From the Red Couch is a new yeah. thing. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I would love to. So um, Aaron, my, my partner in Creative License, um, we were just sort of talking one day and we're like, we gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta get back to making something. Cause you know, again, as, um, as I'm sure you guys know, like when you are an artist and you can't do your craft for a while, you get that like itch, you know, like I just wanna be, I need to create something. Um, so we developed From the Red Couch, uh, which is just a, a series of video interviews um, featuring some of the folks that we've worked with the most over our years as creative license. Um, and, you know, we filmed them, we kind of, we set it up so everyone was, was far enough apart where they could kind of feel safe chatting. And uh, we filmed them at the barn and we've been, we released them once a week uh, throughout the month of October. Um, and it was just really nice to see a lot of our theater friends again and to uh, give them opportunities to reminisce on the shows that they've done together or what makes theater in this area so great. Um, and we called it From the Red Couch because when we first started uh, working at the barn and we had a very, very shoestring budget, anytime we needed a couch in our play, we would take this red leather couch that was at the barn <laughs> and just keep using it. And we would use it in different setups and, and different areas in the room. Um, but if you've come to see a lot of creative license shows, you'll go, oh, I recognize that couch. Didn't you use that in the show you just did? The answer is yes, we did, because we didn't have money <laughs> for our own couch. So we brought back the couches for the, for the interviews. Do you plan to continue that, or is that just... Uh done in October? I think it was just, at least for now, just the four that we released in October. Um, Aaron and I are actually working on a, another video project right now um, that I can't say too much about, but um, is 
hope will hopefully be very fun and very exciting and uh just a, a new a new way for us to all be together and create again uh until we can perform you know on stage in front of big audiences like we're used to it'll be a while i know yeah. i know so we gotta just keep doing what we can to keep putting new art out there I'm thinking about those curtains, Ellen. <laughs> space. <laughs> you know, if anybody else has curtains while you're listening to this, they you can match ours. <laughs> because Casey's ready for us to come down and do some theater. Bring them um, in. I'm ready. <laughs> how many um how many theaters would typically use the barn in, in normal times? Did you have like a, a lot of repeat uh theaters I, I would assume yeah um we have uh going dark theater was in our space a lot um confetti stage has used our the our, our space a few times um and then we've got folks like um patrick white who's you know very uh well known in the theater community he usually has his um acting showcases in at the barn mm -hmm. uh, but kind of you know a nice thing is um Patrick had to rethink his acting class a little bit and the space where he could hold his acting class. And uh, I know Patrick from, from doing theater with him. So he reached out and asked if the barn could accommodate his acting class. And we, we have been for a couple weeks now and I love, you know, having, having everybody in the space. So, uh, so I'm happy to see that theater folks that knew about the barn, but maybe didn't work solely out of the barn are now um, kind of keep like stepping into our orbit in a little bit more um, detailed ways than they had been in the past. So financially, how does it work? Do Is there a set fee for someone? Do you rent it out hourly? Do you take Venmo? You know? Yeah, um, we, in general, we try to be really flexible. So um, we do have standard rates for rentals that if somebody comes to us and wants to rent space, I will give them a full price quote. Um, typically it's by the hour, but then if you say, listen, I really wanna be there, but you know, my budget is more, you know, down here, then I go, okay, let's talk and let's see if we can work something out. Um, so, you know, maybe you pay a little less, but you list us as a co-sponsor of your event and you put our logo on your flyer, you know, things like that. Um, so we have the standard prices for things, but it's so important to us to be able to meet artists where they are at um, and not turn anybody away because they don't have enough money. So I'm always happy to to chat with folks um, we also offer what my executive director calls the sweat equity special so if you don't have a lot of money but you're willing to haul around your furniture and do your cleanup and do all your setup and all of that um you know we can we'll get you in and we'll we'll bring down your your cost a little bit because you're doing all the all the heavy lifting i'm more excited talking to you about this in the <laughs> sense that there is you know there there is a place to do theater, to go and create now with uh, your compatriots and maybe even a little audience for those who are comfortable going inside. So it's, I'm Jazz. And this is, now I, I completely turn it over to Ellen. Um, <laughs> as we start, we, we're closing in on, you know, this is the, the last step, you know, the curtain's about to come down, Casey. <laughs> we still have a little time here. <laughs> So this segment, yeah, this is all about you. It's called the close up, and it's just some rapid fire questions, just to give the, our audience a little taste of Casey. Okay, so, I'm ready. All right. She just had a cigarette. No, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Casey. So to start off, um, what was the moment in your life when you just knew you had to do theater? I was in high school um, and I started working in the props department just as sort of something to do uh, after school. And I ended up being asked by um, my director, Phil Rice, who also does a lot of theater in the area, if I wanted to be his assistant director. And I said, sure, because why not? But then the first uh, couple rehearsals where I was really kind of jumping into what that means to be an assistant director and like a stage manager, I just had this like feeling of this is amazing. This I'm good at this. This is fun. And this is what I want to do. 
Boy, to have Phil Rice take you under your wing, Ooh, under his wing, wow. I know, he was, uh, I'm so lucky and he's just, he's one of my favorite people and I, I am confident that I would not be doing theater and doing the things that I do if it wasn't for him. And what's a show that you've either worked on, seen, read, some experience with that has just really stuck with you, that's made an impact on you and why? Well, I directed a show with Creative License, um, I think three years ago called Mine. Um, and it was this show that uh, Aaron and I had never heard of before. We stumbled upon when we were reading scripts and it's about a woman who um, has just given birth um, to her first child in a home birth and then goes to sleep and wakes up the next morning and is convinced that the baby um, that is in her room is not her baby. So the whole show kind of goes from there in terms of um, is this woman having some sort of postpartum psychosis uh, or is, is she right and did something kind of mystical and maybe not quite of this earth happen to her, her child. Um, and it was, it was a difficult show, but it was, it, I had the greatest cast. Um, we had such a wonderful time working together and I had actually in preparing for it, I put out a call on Facebook to any of my friends that were mothers and just, and sort of said, I'm doing this show. If anybody has any thoughts on what it was like to be a first time mother, especially within those first, you know, few days or few weeks and you feel comfortable telling me, please do. And I got so many messages from women who had really great experiences and really scary experiences. And I was, it was really, um, I was honored that they felt that they could trust me with their stories. And I think it really helped me and my cast um, bring this show to life in a, in a really true and natural way. As a new mom, I, I need to find this play. I he I've heard about this play. I've heard friends of mine talk about this production that you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's a wild play. It gets really, um, it gets kind of uncomfortable. Um, Aaron and I always say that we, we love making our audience uncomfortable because we like presenting plays that, that make you think and really make you feel something, you know, viscerally. Um, and this play was definitely one of them uh, and people, still talk about it which I always love to hear uh, and it was yeah it was one of my favorite shows that I've ever done. Is there a show out there that you haven't been able to sink your teeth into yet that you want to work on? Yes so uh, Aaron always laughs at me because I talk about this show all the time um, but when I was in college um, uh, I didn't work on it, but the department did noises off. And I remember just like being like, I had never seen something with on such a large scale, you know, it has that huge set that has to rotate and you see a show from, you know, front of the stage and then backstage. And it's just hysterical. And it's such a big undertaking and everybody who does theater knows what sh knows the show. Um, so that's my pie in the sky show is to be able to do that that show and, uh, and have that set and just have all those laughs. So someday I'm going to do it. I say, Vanita, have you worked on Noises Off yet? No, and I'd love to. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's yeah, so see, great. It's I, so I've, fun. You did, right, Ellen? Yeah, I've played Poppy, but the thing about Poppy, <laughs> like she doesn't get to do as much crazy running around, especially in act two. So like, I, yeah. I want to do it again and be one of the actors. All right, Casey. Right? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do it i'm telling aaron we've got we've, the three of us are 21 here we come you can pull oh, it off at the albany yeah. barn because it's always a space you have to have the right space to pull yep. that show off and yeah. your backstage is upstairs you see we're doing it already we're doing it so like, those <laughs> curtains <laughs> casey colomay with the albany barn thank you so much it's been thank just you, a delight baby. This was great. I love, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk about the barn and, and I hope some artists that are out there come and, and work there. I'm, I'd love to work with anybody who wants to bring their art to the barn. That's wonderful. And, um, and actually, this is exciting. This is like one of the first times we can announce our next two episodes coming up because right. normally, normally we book it so like last minute. Um, but yeah, but speaking of, uh, Casey mentioned Patrick White. Patrick is back to talk to us next time um, as a kind of end year wrap up will be a little different discussion than the last time. 
And, um, and then we're having Freddie Ramirez after that, the uh, amazingly talented choreographer. Um, and you know, we wouldn't have gotten him had it not been for this pause. Because every time we wanted Freddie, he's, you know, got the tap shoes on, you know, or <laughs> choreographing something. So there's good stuff coming out of this time too. Absolutely. And you, Casey. Yeah, it's this it's the silver lining is people are a little less busy and can spend more time talking or talking about or doing the things they love. <laughs> And please do, Casey, you know, anything going on at the barn, just, you know, send us a message. And um, so we're in the know and we can tell our listeners and post about it because uh, we want to keep everyone informed. Thank you. I will. I definitely will. But it's, um, it's albanybarn.org if anyone wants to go to our site and learn more about what we do. Wonderful. Great. All yeah. right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And I'm Benita Zahn. And we will talk about everything theater next time with you.